Phil was the sort of mate who was always pleased to see you. He was always ready to play soccer or cricket, except he wasn't much of a cricketer, and he never argued. He was always there when Nick got home from school, beating the side of the kennel with his tail. But one day he wasn't. Where's Phil? Nick asked his mum. Well, you tied him up this morning. I've just got in. But come to think of it, I haven't heard him bark. Phil barked at the first person home. Often, he barked just for the sake of barking. The pill has been stolen, Sophie said. Why are you grinning? Nick said to his sister, You like Phil. When he's tied up, but he's so noisy and bruising, I've got marks all over my legs from him. Nick was puzzled. There was half-eaten food in the dog bowl, and his chain could only be unfastened by a human. Ring the pound, Mum said. Nah, he mightn't be too far away. Nick got on his bike and rode around the neighbourhood. He whistled. He called, Phil! Hey, Phil! But no answer. He rang the pound, but it was shut. He rang the number the next morning. No dog answering to Phil's description had been brought in, only a cream terrier and a spaniel that needed a wash. Nick left particulars. The man's name was Sam, and he seemed to understand Nick's worry about his dog. He also told Nick that dogs went walk about often. Maybe Phil had caught the scent of a female. But how had he got off his chain? Phil had not turned up by the afternoon, and there was no message from Sam. Nick walked all through the reserve a few blocks away, whistling and calling. Oh, he's gone on a holiday with another dog, Sophie said. A cheap package tour. And Nick's dad said, Put signs up. Offer a reward. So Nick put signs up all over the neighbourhood, describing Phil, showing a photo and offering a reward. He got a call that evening. How much is the reward? A kid's voice said. Um, uh, five dollars. I've seen your dog running down the street ten minutes ago. It was heading towards the sunset into the hills. Can I have the reward? Nick groaned and hung up. Then an older kid rang up and said he had Phil tied up in his yard. He's a yellow Labrador. My dog is black. Uh, hold on, I'm short-sighted. Nick knew the kid was pretending to look out the window or even go out of the room to check the dog's colour. It's black, the voice said. How much is the reward? You keep the yellow dog, Nick said angrily. And when Phil hadn't turned up the next day, he printed new notices without the offer of a reward. But at the end of the week, there was no sign of his dog. Nothing at the pound, nothing at the SPCA. He's gone away forever, Sophie said. Nick nearly told her to shut up, but she looked like he felt sad. He felt that he had lost his best friend. I'm not giving up the search, he said. His dad sat him down one evening. Phil has probably been stolen, so he could be a good distance from here, either in the city or another suburb. Your best bet is to keep advertising on the net and in other suburbs. Two months passed. Every weekend, Nick rode further and further away from home, searching and whistling. No Phil. And then one Saturday afternoon, he was at the far end of a neighbouring suburb and riding carefully down a busy street. There was a noisy rugby match on at the nearby park, but he heard a bark. Just one. He looked quickly over his shoulder. It seemed to come from behind a takeaway bar. He rode on. It was just a bark... Any old dog could make it. But when he got home, he thought about it. Was the bark familiar? He couldn't be sure. Maybe he'd forgotten what Phil sounded like. It was four o'clock. He biked back to the takeaway bar. A tall wooden fence blocked out what seemed to be a yard. A man in an apron was watching him through the big window, so Nick didn't dare call out, even softly, for Phil. He went inside. The place smelled really greasy and cheap. The floor was dirty. No wonder there were no customers. And the guy was big and surly, with a smudged apron. Great day, Nick said cheerfully. The man just glared. A scoop of fries, please. 
The fries dripped out of a crooked basket and were dumped on paper, then shoved in a bag. Nick took a breath. I thought I heard a Labrador at the back. I really like labs. I'm getting one. No dogs here, mate. Don't like dogs. Ah, oh, thanks. Nick opened his fries on the pavement and was wondering if he dared to creep up to the yard fence and whistle when the big guy suddenly came out the door and glared at him. Nick hopped on his bike and rode away. Further down the street, he ate two fries, then dumped the rest in a bin. But next weekend he rode back to that suburb and found the takeaway bar locked up. A big for sale sign was stuck on the door. Nick tried a gate to the side. It was locked too. He tried jumping up to look over the fence, but it was too tall. It was like a fortress fence. Phil, he called hopelessly. Phil? No answering bark. Nothing. He rode home. But that afternoon, Sam rang. Hey, Nick, we've got a black Labrador here, no collar, but he seems to know the name Phil. Only thing is, he's huge. He's as big as a ship. Phil isn't fat. He was found abandoned behind a shut-down takeaway bar over your way. The neighbour reckoned the guy was trying to train him up as a guard dog, but the dog was useless, and he got really fat on leftovers. I'll be right over. Nick and his dad arrived at the pound 20 minutes later. Sam shook their hands and led them into one of the yards. All the dogs yelped with joy and longing and hope, except for one, a black dog snoozing in a corner. He was so big, he didn't look much good for anything but lying down. Nick was really disappointed. That's not my dog. Check him properly, Sam advised. Phil? Nick needed to see the dog's face. He moved closer. Is that you, Phil? The dog raised its head very slowly, and Nick looked into familiar eyes. Phil? Suddenly life and joy came into the dog's eyes. He staggered to his feet, barking madly, his tail bashing the sides of the yard. He tripped, recovered, then jumped at Nick, knocking him into the dog-smelling dust and licking and licking him. Nick didn't care. It's him! And he wrapped his arms around the dog's neck. He patted and stroked him all the way home. There was a lot of dog to cover. You really are as big as a ship, Phil. No more bad fries and second-rate hamburgers for you. Mm-hmm.